Hello everyone, it's Leo, and it's time to talk about episode 27 from Healing Good Precure. But I'm just gonna start by saying that I'm not gonna talk much about episode 27. I didn't really enjoy this episode and I don't think that it was that important. But we had the villain portion and the end of the episode, which was pretty big, and that's what we're gonna talk about the most. So let's just start by talking about the balloons and Asumi to jump to the important part later. I want to say something that got me very, very happy. Right at the start of the episode, we had the balloons and we had a scene with a Purun's balloon and the rocket balloon from Star Twinkle Precure. I loved that so much. You guys have no idea how happy I was. And then after that, we had another scene that made me extremely, extremely happy. There was the balloon of the team who was friends with Nodoka's parents, and at the, in the same shot, there were other two balloons, and they were the LGBT flag and the trans flag. I know you might say, oh, it's just a rainbow balloon and just a pink and blue balloon, but both of them together in the same shot, and they were the only two balloons in that shot, apart from the main balloon. I honestly don't think it's just a fluke. I honestly don't think. I really believe that they were just giving a shout out to people like us, and I was super happy with that. Oh my god, this means the world to me, and I was just ecstatic. And then we just had the plot, and you know, also we, we learned about how balloons fly and they seem very complicated to be honest and then Asumi was learning about that too it was cute the way they drew things in a very cartoony way to explain that I liked it and Asumi was rooting for them and in this episode she learned different emotions like passion and frustration and the frustration part was kind of interesting you know I liked it but the problem is in the first race in the first trial the, the team that we, we were following didn't win, which was okay, it was normal. And uh, Asumi was feeling very frustrated for them because they knew how passionate they were. And so in the second team, we had someone who couldn't do it. And Asumi jumped in and said, look, I can help you. I can know how the wind will work. And this was not that nice. I believe, first of all, Asumi has mythical powers, and so I think that it usually deflects from what Precure is, of, you know, you trying hard and winning things by yourself. Asumi wasn't helping them based on what she could achieve, instead she was just helping them because she has this power in her, and I felt that a little off-putting <laughs> in a way. But one thing I liked about it is that Latte was the one to actually say, Asumi, you should participate because you know how the wind works. That was interesting because Latte is a mascot that barely participates in Healing Good. Her role in Healing Good is just feeling sick and telling the girls where the monsters are. And that's basically it. She's almost never in the action of Healing Good in terms of acting. She doesn't do anything relevant in the episodes and she doesn't really have a say in most episodes and in this one she did so that part I get it. And then we had the guy flying with the balloon and Asumi you know helping him and that was supposed to be like super emotional and I was like you're just gonna win because the spirit, the spirit of the wind is helping you. It It's not that emotional, it's not that interesting. <laughs> at the end of the day. But Guairu appeared, and Guairu was very funny in this episode, you know, his chemistry side, Breaking Bad Guairu. It was very funny, and then he attacked, and he used the tactic that I believe was supposed to be the tactic that they, that he would use for the girls to get the power up. He used lots of mega parts in the Mega Byogen so that it could grow even stronger. But at the end of the day, it was not a problem for Cure Earth. And the fight was very nice. Cure Earth was able to use the harp for the first time in a different way, and I absolutely loved it the way she played the harp to control the wind. And she did like a wind saucer, and then she threw at the monster, and then she was able to control the wind, because she was able to control the currents. I was in awe. I loved it. I loved it. The problem was obviously the other three who couldn't do anything. 
Fontaine couldn't even use the bottle. Oh my god, that was so frustrating. I really want the girls to get stronger. And the problem, uh, I see lots of people commenting, oh, Kira Earth is too strong, she's, you know, disbalancing the, the, the harmony of the team. And I don't think the problem is Kira Earth. Kira Earth, on one hand, is very nice. I love seeing her fight. And she is obviously the most interesting part of the fights of this whole season. The problem is with the other three who are very weak. They should have been stronger. You know, since, since the start of the season, they're very weak. So they should have been stronger. This is not a problem of Cure Earth being stronger than them. And so they won uh, very easily. Cure Earth could beat the monster very easily. And they got the air bottle finally. And we now are with one bottle only. And Hinata says something very interesting when we get to see all the bottles lined up like that. She says that... After we get all the bottles, something interesting might happen. How does she know that? I don't know, but maybe that's the power-up. When they get all the bottles, the power-up might be born. So very interesting to see that, you know, every time the precures collect something that they're supposed to be collecting in a season, something interesting happens. And then we get to the end of the episode, which is the biggest part of it. Here's my problem with healing good. Noroka hears something and then she runs off by herself. But when she goes there, she meets the Ruizen and she transforms into Cure Grace. She gets into Cure Grace mode very fast and she, you know, they start a conf uh, confrontation. I understand that we need to have a the Ruizen and Grace moment, both of them alone with no one else for what happened to happen. But Noroka running off by herself like that makes absolutely no sense to me. Noroka being an impulsive character was never really established in Healing Good, so for her to run off without calling the others, or at least mentioning to the others that she heard something, it just doesn't feel believable. You know, and so, like, this is a problem I have. Healing Good has great ideas, but it doesn't really know how to write the road to get to those ideas. And then, that scene for me, was really strange and we had a glimpse of that in Noruka and Cure Grace in episode 10 when she was fighting by herself and she created a sword but they never really returned to that side of her personality and now that the plot needs that comes back but what happened after that was insane insane completely completely insane so we have the reason in this episode talking to Shindo Ine and he asks her about her host, if she remembers her host. And she says she doesn't remember it, and she doesn't even care about it. Shinoini is being a big problem because Guayu is trying something, that Ruizen is trying something, and she is doing nothing. Girl, wake up, we need your plans. I don't think that's gonna happen. I think she's gonna do nothing for the rest of the season. But, you know, and that Ruizen asks her about that. So. This answers us lots of questions about their origin. The three of them aren't originally Byogens. They had a host, they had an infection going on before they were born, and then they were born, kind of like Batete Moda. And they don't remember who their hosts are. So what happened at the end of the episode was that Daruizen infected Noruka, or Cure Grace, with a mega part. And when she was infected, she fell down, she couldn't do anything, and he just escaped because he wants to see what is going to happen to her. Oh god, this is insane. I was shocked when I saw that. I was shocked. Oh my god. I was like, what the hell is going on here? Uh, we already knew that Noruka was going to be sick, but girl, Oh god. And then uh, in the preview, we see a different Daruizen. We see a Daruizen who we haven't seen before, and I am interested to know what that is about. So I obviously have my theories, I've been talking to Inu, and I have my own theories in my mind. I believe that Daruizen was born from Noruka when she was a child, when she was a young child, and she was sick. At that time, she was infected with Biokens, and that's the origin of. Uh, that reason. That is why she was sick, that is why she was hospitalized, but obviously since it was a magical thing, she got a little better after that, but obviously the, the side effects stayed with her, and she kind of lived a sickly life up until now. 
and that reason was born when she was a child. I believe that that reason was born like long, long, long time ago since the first Cure Earth because he mentions her in the first episode and when he sees her, he knows about her. But that can be more or less the case just like Batete Mulda was. Like Batete Mulda knew about stuff but he wasn't there around when they happened. But he knew about those things probably because King Byogen told him that it might have been the same thing with Daruizen. And so we see a different Daruizen and he has a flower in his eye which is Grace's motif, Noruka's motif. So I, I'm confused. I'm really confused. So I really believe that that is the the focus of the reason now. Uh, we're, we're probably gonna learn a lot and lots about him and about his story in the next episode and I'm so curious and I feel so sorry for Noel because she does not deserve to go through that. Oh my god, that is so sad. She really, really doesn't deserve it. <laughs> oh damn. But next episode is going to be a ride for sure. I'm scared! Anyways, please share your thoughts on episode 27 and the reason on the comment box below. Let's keep talking. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye bye!